Hey beautiful souls, how are you? Callista here with a little video about purifying, balancing and uplifting the energy of our home and our workspace and our environment so it feels fresh and clear and joyful to be in and uh, coming to you straight after doing a photo shoot for uh, the Daily Mail newspaper here in the UK. This is why I'm wearing a dress. <laughs> a dress that probably I would not normally wear, but nonetheless, I'm kind of liking it. And they did my hair and makeup, so I'm kind of feeling a little bit glam. So from that to talking about clearing and up-leveling the energy of our home, this is really, really important. And... Uh, I'm excited to be sharing for the first time after many tried and tested techniques applied in my own home space. I'm going to be sharing the first of uh, probably a couple of workshops devoted to working with the energies that are in our home, that are overlaying our home, that are off the land and the surrounding community around really really important so there's a workshop going to come forward on the 8th of may the next ascension workshop i haven't really had much time to talk about it i know a lot of you have signed up already but i want just to hop on and talk about how when we purify the energy of our home everything transforms everything transforms because our environment is really a reflection of our inner and vice versa and if you've read my book, The Female Archangels, I talked a little bit about this with Archaea Purity, the female angel twin of Archangel Zadkiel on how to cleanse the energy of objects like jewellery or antiques or items that we get maybe from like a charity or a thrift shop that have had lots of interaction. How do we cleanse the energy? How do we bring it back to neutral? And how do we uplift it? How do we raise its energy? And we, you know, out there, there's so many different space clearing, home clearing courses and books, and they talk about using sage or herb, different types of herbs and crystals, and uh, maybe opening portals, closing portals. And while all of that is definitely beneficial. And when practiced with responsibility and discernment in a co-creative, co harmonious way with the spirits of your home, because there is spirits of your home that are going to be there. We'll talk about them more in a, in a moment. While that is beneficial, often it can aggravate the spirits within your home and around your home. And also, it's not consistent. We may use sage or paulo santo or maybe something that we've made like a home spray and we put our light into it and our energy maybe some crystal frequencies some light energy in there we might spray it in the corners spray it wherever we feel there's discordancy or old stuck stagnant energy and it might feel good we might have this sense of you know the home feels light feels nice and cleansed and clear for a couple of days and then it just goes back. Why is that? We're going to be talking about why that is. Often it's because the practitioner or the person that's cleansing the house hasn't actually gained the permission from the spirits who are overlaying the property. And what I mean by that is, this is something that I've kind of had to learn the hard way um, over the years. So we would be ignorant to say that the home that we live in is our home. It's not our home. We might we might uh, own the property, but we can't really say it's ours because there's actually, there's overlays of different spiritual beings from elemental nature spirits that reside in our home to spirits who loop the perimeter. You know how a, a cat or a dog will loop if you have a cat or a dog you'll find that it will only go so far is it like a mile or a couple of miles around your property 
spirits do that too. Spirits will walk in a very uh, routine way around your property. And sometimes spirits will actually walk through your property and they'll continue to loop. Have you ever experienced this? Now, sometimes these spirits are positive. Sometimes they're completely neutral and they do not even care about you and what you're doing in your house. Sometimes they're quite negative. So I'm going to be sharing in this two-hour ascension workshop what you can do to reroute these beautiful spirits. You're still honouring them, but reroute them so they're not going through your your room or your bedroom, keeping you up at night time. Um, and we'll also be talking about and you'll be connecting with the elemental, the nature being that lives within your home. Now, we all have one, if not more than one. And I was very grateful to connect with, she's this small, um, between my hip to my, she comes up between my hip to my knee in height, round, female, very like a, like a, She's not a gnome, she is more of a pixie and she has a maternal, almost like a midwife sense about her. And when I had Amaya, my baby daughter, and and obviously still had Eden and Rowan, they were small children, small boys, to look after, the home to look after, running a business, doing Facebook Lives, connecting with you, all of this stuff. I was very, very overwhelmed. And at night time, doing the breastfeeds, I would go into Maya's room and I would be sitting there exhausted, absolutely exhausted. And I could feel her right beside me, taking the energy, helping me, um, pulling up the covers around Amaya um, when she was cold, if, you know, so in so many ways. She helped me in so many ways and she still helps me. And it is really life-changing when we take the time to understand that our house, our property, there is so many multidimensional levels of being that, that live in our home, that go through our home, that occupy the space in our land, in our yard. Um, so we're going to be going really in depth about this, something I've never shared before. I've shared it one to one with clients before and sometimes um, in person courses we'll talk about it. Angel healing, we might be talking about what do you do if, for example, you buy an object and you know it has a possession energy. So when you wear it like a necklace, um, you feel heavy or you feel like it's got a being attached to it, a silhouette of a spirit or an antique, it just feels really heavy. What do you do in that circumstance? Um, I'll give you a little tip. Don't give it away. If you know something has got a possession energy attached to it or something of a low level, demonic force, something like that, or, and we'll go into this in, in the workshop, please don't give it away to somebody and please don't sell it, okay? The only time you can really give it to somebody is to be very clear okay I've perceived this do you still want it and if they say yes you can then you can give it we're really entering this new age of discernment and responsibility as we heighten and expand our consciousness we have to be really aware of energy just like we're aware of our emotions and the thoughts that we're running we have to really be aware of our energy so knowing how to consistently purify and cleanse your home and up level it in co-creative harmony with the spirits of, of your property and your land is the way forward friends it really is it's going to make you feel great you're not going to get sick so much you're not going to feel so down if you ever experience anxiety depression maybe you've you've been feeling really great and then you come into your home and within about half an hour, you're feeling sick. Do you ever get like that? Do you ever feel sick? Or really worried or confused or stressed or dense? It's because you're home. There's so much going on in your home. It needs cleansed. It needs purified. We need to speak. Speak to the elemental of the home. Tune into the energy of our home space. 
not connect with anything. That's kind of like the kiss of death. And that's where so many practitioners, like feng shui practitioners or house, you know, energy uh, healers will go into a property. They might cleanse the property, but what happens by connecting to beings that don't have the best interests at heart of that practitioner? The beings will be cleansed from the property, but guess where they'll, where they'll go? They'll go home with a practitioner and then they'll have them in their home. So we're going to be talking about all of this. Um, and also one more thing that often gets missed in these space clearing courses is imprints. An imprint. Everything has, and if we have put our focus in it and we have spent time to be with it, everything will have, for example, jewellery, an emotional or mental or psychic imprint of our energy goes into that object from a hairbrush to your favorite coffee coffee cup to a sofa um especially sofas couches where you're lying down often your favorite chair your bed okay is a big one these imprints again can be positive neutral or negative now i'll tell you um the reason why I'm doing this course and I feel so passionate about empowering people to know this, to know this and apply it is because my sofa in there, this is why I'm not even filming it um, because I need to do another cleanse, has an imprint of me, an energetic imprint of me that doesn't feel so good. And why? Because I often lie on the couch after putting the kids to bed, after doing lots of work, writing, whatever needs done, and I will literally just collapse on the couch. I will be tired, tired, tired. So what's happening is, if I'm in an energetic, just feeling good during the day, if I go and sit on the couch, you know what happens within about five, 10 minutes? I'll just feel myself do this. <laughs> and I'll lie down. Because that imprint, it's like a, it's like an energetic movie reel of me lying down, crashed out, falling asleep. That's what happens. So you're, you're, um, if I try and get up in this dress that they put me in, I really do like it, but it's hard to move in it. If I'm just feeling really good and I go to sit in this beanbag and this beanbag has an imprint of an energy, especially something emotional or mental Maybe you go and you sit in a chair and when you sit in that favourite chair, you're not feeling so great or you're worried, you're worried about bills, you're worried about relationships. Even if you're feeling good, the second you sit in that chair, because it's overlaid with that energetic, that aura, you sit down, it will start to infuse into your auric field and you'll come into that frame of mind or frame of being. And it's not always negative. Um, there's a space upstairs in my office where I meditate and because every time I go into that space and I sit down and I'm connecting with my team, with my higher self, it feels really good. So the second I sit there, I'm ready in that, in that frame. When I go into my garage, which I've kind of turned into a gym, I'm, I'm either going in there to work out or to do the laundry. So I can easily go into, yeah, I'm feeling really energetic, let's work out or let's do mummy duties. So it's very tricky how to get rid of a negative imprint. It's tricky, tricky, tricky. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I woke up, I'd asked the angels, I was like, I really like sitting on that sofa. I don't want to buy a new sofa. Nothing is working. Crystals aren't working. Uh, sage isn't working, intention isn't working, violet flame energy isn't working, angel healing is not working. What do I need to do? And I was told a process, it worked, I recorded it on my phone, it's eight minutes long, I want to guide you through this. So please come to this, to our workshop, it is literally going to be bang, 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 technique after technique after technique. So you come away feeling really empowered. You have the replay as well. So you can really take your time to go into each of the techniques to one cleanse, purify your property. No matter if you have 
no matter what's going on on in your property within and uh, around reading the energy i'm going to teach you how to read the energy instead of connecting to anything so that if there is anything untoward anything is negative or there's a dark area or a dense area or stagnant energy of your home you're not connecting with that entity or that thought form you're being very neutral also going to be sharing how to meet and partner with the house elemental or your property's el earth elemental it may not be earth elemental it may be another elemental to support you and sometimes honestly this beautiful midwife she helps me she helps me cooking she helps me with the kids if they're being crazy like she'll go in and she'll just like soothe them oh it's if I've been asking for a nanny to help me and I've been reminded lately that I do have an, an energetic nanny living here all the time. She's here, bless her. Um, and I'm going to be talking about and, sh and going through this process of imprints. How do you... Have you got a bed and you've just came out of a relationship but yet you can still feel the energy of your ex-partner in your bed? So I'm going to share with you a way so you don't have to spend so much money on buying a new bread. You can make it feel completely brand new. You can remove her imprint, his imprint from that space. And bring your own light. Bring your own light into your property. It's going to be amazing. It's a two-hour workshop on the 8th of May, Saturday. There's replays included. Um, I'll put the link in the comments here, but if you just go to my website, callistascension.com, you can sign up for it. And I have a funny feeling this might even go into a course or a book because there's so much that so much that isn't shared. And the thing is, friends, I used to open and close energetic portals and I thought I knew exactly what I was doing. I was quite happy, the angels that I was working with and it all felt really good. Until I was basically, I learnt my lesson, I learnt the hard way that I thought I could just go in knowing what I know. I closed down a portal in my son's room. It wasn't closed down. It actually aggravated all the energy there. Um, I'll go into what happened on the workshop, but I definitely got my my hands wrapped and learnt the hard, hard way that Unless you have been working with portal energy for years and years and years and you are, you walk harmoniously with the spirit world. In fact, I think for working with portals, you really have to have one foot in the spirit world and one foot in the, in the physical world and really have a balance because it's very, very tricky energy. Um, Anyway, we're going to be sharing techniques that really work, practical techniques that you can apply in your home to have consistent energy. You're feeling good. If your space is feeling good, you're feeling good. And last of all, cherry on top, I'm going to share with you a way to magnetize the energy of your home to attract what you want in. Now, from doing this, that eight minute process that came through, from doing that, I can tell you, friends, in the last couple of weeks, I've had, I've been on um, mainstream radio to 3.1 million people talking about unicorns. I never thought that would happen. That's a huge manifestation. Today, I've just been having a, a photo shoot here. Makeup photographer came here, possible front cover on a, on a national newspaper. Um, all about magic. I mean, this is this is incredible in this space. You know, that wouldn't have happened if my space was heavy energy, dense, spiky, um, spirits going left, right and centre. I was not magnetising. I was really magnetising more to doom and gloom and tiredness and overwhelming. None, none of that would have come into my life. None of that new energy, those new opportunities. So we're going to be sharing with you techniques on how to magnetize the light of your home so it becomes attractive to what you want to create for you, for your life, for your family's life, and so on. Sound good? Come and join me on the 8th of May and the replay is included. Any questions, just put them below or just send me a private message. So much love.